Okay, so this is our standard, right? You're on a flat table, flat piece of paper, whatever. Um, resolve the forces, okay? So you can see, this is a simpler one because all I have is the tension in the string. That's the only thing that's giving me weird kind of forces, right? I've got the normal here off the table, but I don't have to resolve it because it's just up and down. And then of course there's a weight force which you never have to resolve, right? So you can see, same thing down the bottom here. I will just make a brief comment, right? After you've gone ahead and resolved this, and you'll see, this happens a lot, by the way. Um, all conical pendulums are pretty much set up in the same way, and it just sort of makes sense to always have this semi vertex angle as the one that we use, because it's like, well, okay, well, then we can take advantage of the same idea every time. You're gonna get this flipped around thing where your horizontal one is sine, and your vertical one is cosine. Once you put them together, these are your equations. Now, I just want you to note this. We try and, we, I hope I've modeled this for you well, right? Every time you see an equation, you get to a, like a, a simplified spot, something like that. You should then say, well, what does that mean, right? Now, what I like about this is that this tells you, for instance, if you've got like that, you remember we had those strings and we we're spinning things around, okay? If you have it exactly, exactly taught, right? There is some tension um, in the string and there is some force that's being reacted from the table or whatever surface you're on. Okay. And if you start to let go of the string, right, that's this component over here. This is what's coming from the tension of the string. Okay? So if you're relaxing that, remember, it's still staying on the table. Presumably the mass that you're spinning around, good morning, is not so heavy that you know, it's going to make a burst a hole through the table. Okay? So presumably it's still stationary, which means that these two sides have to remain balanced. Does that make sense? Well, if this is getting smaller, then this must get bigger. Right? Well, imagine if the mass is on your hand, okay, and you've got the string holding up there. As you relax the string, you will feel more weight. Your hand is doing the lifting rather than the string. Does this make sense? So these guys always have to add up to this, so this has to increase, okay? So each one is pushing its own amount in order to add up to the weight, okay? So that was my, um, that was my explanation there. Uh, you can see here, it is somewhat trivial. You're like, yeah, it's headed towards the center and that's also headed toward the center, but this is going to be, you'll see this as a preferred way, um, either in the solutions or you know, a question which says, prove that the force is da 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 da, because just less negatives, so why not? But I still like to write this, because this is where it comes from. This means motion toward the center. It's somewhat coincidental, but they're just oriented in the same way. Okay, as you'll see, it's not always the case. Let's have a look. This is the one we just did. Um, let me make a comment. Hopefully you see this on this diagram and you've looked at yours. We've talked about the colors that you use and what can be seen and what can't be, I very deliberately on all of these diagrams I'm about to show you, I've only used the approved colors, <laughs> black and blue. They, they're just so that your diagram doesn't get too busy, right? I like to, just by convention, I like to make the actual motion a special color and then the rest of the diagram I've got in its conventional color, just so I can see this is where all the action is happening, right? So that I see that it's different and put in right angles where they're relevant, right? Yeah. So you're saying that like we shouldn't use like yellow highlighter or like orange. I, I think I think it's fine, okay. to be honest. I think it's fine. Because remember, this is mainly about you interpreting your own diagram, right? And being able to form all of this stuff. Yeah. Like this is in black and blue, and that's not negotiable. But what you do over here, like I think that's fine. Yeah. But if you're if you're like, oh no, but it has to be like I'm saying this is under the most limited situation, and you can still have enough colour here to distinguish what's going on. Okay. Alright, now if you have a look at C, here's the question. An inverted cone, an inverted cone, okay? So what's different and what's the same? Well, <laughs> this, this is almost always gonna be the same, right? That tension, I've still got all the same equations set up. When you have a look at the normal force, because your cone is upside down, look at the direction that the normal force is facing. You see that? So in fact, the normal force and the tension force are more or less oriented in the same way, except they're just off by an angle, okay? That angle, again, is because it's a normal force, is defined by the angle of this surface, right? You're just at right angles to whatever that is, right? And so that's why here, you can see, both of my um, resolution diagrams, you can see tension, off to up and left. Normal, also up to the um, top and left. But um, I had to draw this part in here, which corresponds to, oh, where's, where's this alpha? Where's it coming from, right? So that I can do my angles in here properly, yeah? And then, again, you combine them. Can you see what's happened? Can you see what's happened? These guys, they're both positive because they're both headed that way, right? And both of these, they're negative because they're both headed that way, into the center, okay? 
Uh, let's have a look at another example. Here we go. I, this is, in fact, I think the example I showed you last week. I, I, I mentioned it. I didn't, we didn't do anything with it. On the surface of a sphere, okay? In fact, you'll find it's pretty much just like this one. It's pretty much just like this one with one difference. Can you see? Have a look at this one. Just forget that the circle is there for a moment, or the sphere, rather. Just, just do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, the only difference is where alpha is, right? The forces are still oriented in the same directions. Uh, tension's still going that way, normal's still going this way. Ah, but alpha's measured from down here, okay? Which means when you come down to here, these guys are swapped around. Do you see that? So you just got to be careful with where, that's why I don't skimp on this. Don't try and do it in your head. Draw, draw where the complementary angles are. In fact, you can see here, I just use alternate angles. It's super easy if you take the time to draw a good diagram. Okay. I better put that sphere back, otherwise my diagram is going to look terrible later. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, have a look at this one. Inside of a bowl. Inside of a bowl. Right? This is just like the upside down, the inverted cone. Okay. But again, just have a look at where you're measuring your angle from. Before, they measured the angle at the tip of the cone, which is at the bottom. But here as, is the sphere. right? So they're going to measure the important point for a sphere is the very center. So that's why the angle is in there. And you can see... Just compare this to what we did over here, right? Have a look at what's, um, actually, sorry, this is not what you want to compare with. This is what you want to compare with. Stay. Mm. Hold on, let me make it a bit smaller so you can see it at the top. There we go, okay? So you can see what's different. It's going to be, each time what varies is how do these sides relate? Right? And what about these angles? Is it cosine or is it sine based on wherever they're measuring from? Right? And all you're doing is just shuffling them around. It all depends on your construction of these diagrams. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, I think I've only got two more to show you. Two or three. So, here we go. Okay, ah, this is an important one. So, I think, Raph, you mentioned this one before. This is a single string passing from A to B. Right? And then they'll say P is something like a smooth light ring. Okay? So therefore, it just binds it along and then this thing moves around. Okay? The important thing is, and you can, if you have your string that actually not, did you take your strings home with you? Was it Brendan who only tore his apart? No, if you have your string with you, okay, I tore yours apart, right? <laughs> if you, don't, don't just imagine this, actually get your piece of string out. Right? If you get a friend to hold this here for you, right? and then you've got these ends, well, if you pull on one end, you're pulling on the other end too, right? So if you pull here, you'll let go at this end if you're not holding it properly, okay? So what that means is these two tensions have to remain the same, right? You pull hard on, it's not like it's gonna be, oh, there's a stretchy part of this string and a non-stretchy part. Pulling here necessarily is pulling here, which is why these are equal. Wait, so does okay? that mean it's isosceles? Uh, no, it doesn't, because I can move this up and down, right. so it doesn't have to be like these are equal in, um, uh, length, yeah. that's right. So, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, but the total tension will, 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 will be equal, okay? Um, and the angles, the angles will make these things different to each other. So again, you, you have a look. You'll start to get very tired of seeing these same kinds of equations, right? What you've got to be careful is, where are the sides? Which, which way are these facing? All depends on this. And which one is co cosine and which one is sine? So you just got to be very careful what you're positioning of your angle, okay? Um, G is not really worth looking at. Okay, I think this is the last one. So, again, single string, right? But this time, you've got two masses, right? Two masses. So one is the one that's swinging around, and the other one is the one that's kind of like an anchor sort of thing, right? Because it's the one string, that's why you can see these guys. They're equal, right? And then you just got to be careful with, okay, well, where are the forces going? Now, despite the seeming complexity of this, like, oh, no, there's two masses, okay? Because this guy isn't moving, right? Remember, it's the anchor, right? It's not moving up or down, so these two just balance each other. And it's not moving left or right. Well, that's good because there's no forces acting on it left or right, so you don't have to worry about any of those. So you resolve the forces, the forces at P. That's just normal. And then you get those equations. When you do it at Q, that's it. It seems complicated, but it's not. So don't get intimidated by it. Okay. All right, so I guess my tip is, uh, what makes this different from projectile is that it's, you've got to worry about your directions. But once you do, you'll like, do all of these, and you'll start to get a vibe for it. Oh, this is not. It will feel different every time for the first two or three. And then you will get into a rhythm. Okay.